Hi everyone, welcome to another uh, live stream photo editing session where you send your pictures in and I do the best I can to edit them in a way that uh, is, you know, if they were my pictures, how I would edit them if they were my own pictures. And every week the pictures are getting better and better and I've, I've been needing to do less and less. Uh, but let's see what came in today. Uh, we have uh, what a bunch here. Let's go to, and I think by next week I'm gonna try and set up a a Zoom or actually I think I'm gonna use Meet from Google, Meet Hangouts, and then we can actually have some audio from a lot of you coming in in a group conversation and talking about the photos and making suggestions. So. Uh, I'm going to edit the photos, but I also want you guys to put in the chat section here for now uh, some feedback and things you'd like me to try as well, because I'm not the most creative person when it comes to edits. I, I just try to get it more technically perfect or make some changes for taste, you know, my personal taste. But a lot of times you guys make much better suggestions uh, to focus in on the story or or work with the shadows and, and highlights or even the cropping can be different. Um, so I always, I, I welcome the feedback, Any anything you can give. <laughs> and yes, Rick, thank, thanks for the reminder. <laughs> Last time you mentioned, I had no idea what you were talking about. Now I know what you mean. Okay. Uh, how do I get to my screen with the... Where is it? I got a wire here. Oh, I'm so tiny. Let me get there. All right, let's see. Uh, any questions to start? No, it looks like everybody's just waiting to get started here. <laughs> okay, good. So uh, again, these are just in the order that they show up in Workspace, no particular order. And we have another like really awesome, awesome portrait from James, he, he's been sending in some excellent portraits uh, with every stream, and I've had to do almost no editing to them. And th this is another one where I, I probably wouldn't change anything. Um, I mean, I, I, I like deep blacks, and that's the only thing I would change here, because that's my personal taste, but I really like how you um, feathered everything almost a total black all the way down in here because last time I didn't like how the dress or whatever fabric was just cut off kind of at the edge of the crop so I really like how you feathered everything here and the lighting and everything is perfect the highlights aren't blown out they're a little bit high for me I'd like them a little bit softer but uh, you did a really good job with the uh, shadows anyway um, I like the shadows on her neckline and on her face here, it's a really good fall off. It looks like you had a little fan going too. Um, or that's that's a lot of mousse or gel <laughs> on the hair. But I like this. I like this shot. I'd have probably done a little less light here. Because she has black hair, I assume. So I think... Um, the black hair needs to be, <coughs> excuse me, a little more black. Uh, but let's let's play with the shadows and get it to where all of this area here is black, and um, and see what happens to the hair when I do that. So, and and with black and whites, I always like to dehaze to see what that does for the tones. Let me just crank that up a little bit. Didn't seem to do much this time. Let me see where the highlights are. So we're not blown out. We're still in the low 200s here. Low 200s in here. And I'm looking at right, right here are the RGB values. So if I see a 255, 255, 255, I know the highlight's been clipped. But what I'm seeing is like, 
uh, right here I'm seeing 237, 234, 230. So they're a little bit high, but they're not clipped. So that's a really, really good job. Nothing is clipped. And then here in the in the darker areas, if you see the RGB values at the bottom, uh, we have 42, 42, 42. So that's 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 a very dark, dark gray, perfect gray, no color at all. Um, but up here, if you notice, the RGB values are a little bit different. 234 red, 229 green, and 226 blue. So that tells me there's a little bit of toning in the image, even if I can't see it with my eye in the picture because the picture is, looks black and white to me. But there's actually some toning in the image as well. So that's really nice. Uh, I really like the tone. So I want to try to edit this to get the the, the grays down here, the 42 RGB value in gray and get that down to almost zero without affecting here being in the low 200s with the slight toning that's in here. So that's, I really like it. Uh, let's see. So if you look at the, um, the histogram, you can see this area right here is completely empty so that there's no complete blacks in here everything starts at about a 42 RGB value so I'm just gonna bring this up to here right about there and now I'm clipping a little bit so that's a little bit too much ah, right there is perfect so now my little black dot, it may be hard to see on the stream, but I'm right on this line where it starts to increase, you know, where it spikes up. So I've, I've crushed everything black without losing any of the other fine tones in the image. So if I move my, my uh, cursor down here, I can see the RGB values are 24, so almost half what they were before. So almost black, but not quite. And then in the skin tones, I still have low 200, so I didn't affect the, the highlights at all. Uh, yeah, this looks, this looks good. I could probably, let me see what happens if I bring this in a tiny bit. No, I don't want to do that. Let me take the dehaze back off. Because the dehaze didn't do anything for the tones this time that I could see. I think that's all I would do. Any anyone have any other suggestions? Because it's otherwise it's really the perfect technique, you know, in terms of lighting, to me this is this looks this is perfect now. Uh because we still have good good tones up in here. Uh I'm just using an old AOC monitor. I do need to get a newer monitor. Because I noticed when I was watching this live stream after the fact from last week, um, the tones looked very different on a different monitor than they do on this one. So um, I may upgrade my monitor here soon. Because it, it, it's affecting my, my final output. Because when I look at my images on different devices, it doesn't look quite the same as it does on this. Even though this monitor is ca color calibrated, the uh, the light to dark, the contrast ratio is not that good on it. But this is at least six years old, this monitor, I believe. In terms of telling a story, I'm being distracted by trying to figure out what she's doing with her hands. Maybe we're thinking about more in the poses as the photography is good. Yeah, exactly. The, the, technically, I think the, the image is perfect, but in terms of story and creativity and all of the things that you need to know to make a good image is where I'm really weak, right? Um, I like that she's looking straight into the camera. Um, the only thing I would change is I'd like to see her hair more black because I'm sure she has black hair. And yeah, the hands, I'm not sure what's going on with the hands. It's kind of like she's just holding this up to cover herself with one hand, so I get that. Uh, but the other hand, maybe it needs to be 
doing something more proactive because that yeah that looks more like a pose than it does like a story right she's just posing her covering herself a little bit is kind of the story so she may not you may not even need that other hand in there altogether because it's not adding to the story at all it's just showing another piece of clothing and so that makes it look more like a pose rather than a storytelling image i think so I, I would go with that but yeah it's it's beautiful beautiful lady beautiful image um i might throw in a green filter to bring her lips out a little bit more if i had the raw image i would use a green filter on the black and white to bring her make her lips a little darker and depending on the color of her eyes in real life uh i might accentuate that a little bit too but yeah very good okay let's uh move on to the next one but good great great job james always always a great image love seeing yours all right let's see des i don't i didn't see des come in yet but this is des's image he, he also regularly submits uh some pictures in uh so we got some green tones Oh, soft to be fun. I'm sorry, the chat's a little bit delayed. Let me go back real quick. Try a tight crop from the elbow cutting the hang. Uh, like this? I don't know if that's... I don't know if that's what you mean or not, <laughs> but yeah, see, cutting out the hand, I think the image is a little more interesting. Let me, yeah, if we take the hand out, I think this would be a good image. Let me just see what it looks like real quick. So that's too big a brush. What if we, oops, oops, let me, let me grab some from down here. My brush is not working. Why? Uh, let me turn it off, turn it back on. Let me try that one more time. My brush stopped working. Damn you, workspace. Well, that's kind of it. But you see, when I take the hand out, I, just to give you an idea, if you take the hand out, I think the other hand, if it was, it was help, if it was helping to hold up the uh, the towel or whatever it is, that would be a little nicer image. Uh, I think that works. And then maybe frame the girl so her hands appear lower in the picture with her head more central. She needs more space above her head. Yes. Yes, I agree. A little more space above the head, but I can't crop it bigger than the, the actual frame in, in workspace. But let's compare these. Let's just compare these two. I haven't done that yet. But that's kind of the before and after. I think that, I think taking the hand out works better. And then just crushing the blacks a little bit more. It's a little bit too gray for me. Oops, I got a little bit of a bleed on my on my green screen there. Okay. Uh, but okay, let's move on. I'm sorry. Let's move on now. <clears throat> yeah, much better without the hand, right? I think so. I think so. Okay, now let's move on. So I'm working on Dessa's picture here. Lots of green tones. This kind of gives me like that, that Matrix movie where everything in the Matrix was kind of had that green tint. 
Uh, but I, I like all of the patterns here. And so there's a lot of intersecting patterns. We have this, this row of steps here. I like the bottom of this. I like this stairway down. The only challenge I have is it gets a little busy here. Like this, this wall and all of this down here is a little bit busy. So I would probably straighten and crop this to just this second stair here and get rid of this fence down here. Because this fence or this this handrail here, I think, is just a little bit too busy in the mix, but everything else looks good. So uh, let me try and straighten this. And I know I know I'm cropping the image a little bit. Let me let me get it straight in the center. And then I'm going to crop out this left side and then crop out the handrail. Because I think that's what you saw was this pattern here. So maybe a square crop. Let's see what that looks like. All right, uh, so we have a little bit of distortion too, like aspect skewing distortion, not not lens distortion. Let me see. I think something like this works. Uh, no, Roberto, I think you want me to try a keyline filter. I yeah, I I don't think that would work with this too well because there's only it's a monotone image. There's only the two colors. Let me do a key line too. Yeah, I I don't think that works. But uh This is what I would do with this image. Because if you, if you look at, uh, I mean, I like the vertical. I just don't like this hand railing here. And I would have focused on the patterns of this row and this row and this stairway coming in. Because I like how it's, how it's crisscrossing here and criss, oops, crisscrossing here. Because we have, we have kind of a triangle here. Yeah, I would I would rework the scene a little bit so you get more sharper triangles and sharper it'd probably be hard from that angle to get to get better angles, but I think you could definitely work on the triangle aspect of it, even though the angles may not be perfect 45 degree angles. But uh this is this is all I can do with this one, but I like I like the patterns here in the stairway. And I like this part here. I might just actually, if I crop, since this got all messed up, because I'm not capturing the entire thing, I think I, I think I'll go wide. Let me go back to the crop. Maybe a 16 by nine. No, let me try. Let me go back to four by three. I think that works better. Ugh. Let 
No, the original square crop that I had was fine. I just have to square it in a little bit more. Yeah, I would do something like this. And then if we compare these two. So I would retake the image and try and capture the entire balcony. Work on the angles a little bit so I get a little bit more triangular. Like I think you could move over and get a better triangle in here and some better angles over here. It's hard to describe. You have to actually be there, right? Man, but now we're losing all of the patterns that are down in here. So, it's, there's a shot here. I'm just not, I'm just not capturing it. I mean, let me go back to a taller, taller crop. All right, this is it. This is all I'm gonna do to this one. But yeah, basically it's just this bottom part here. But yeah, Des, you're, you're on the right track. I like the green tones and I, I like the patterns I'm seeing in here. It's just the, the, the angle you got it at was just a little bit off. Whoops. Let's um let's move on to the next one. Oh, action shot here. And this is a raw image. Um The front wheel is cut off, unfortunately, but that's the only thing. I would take another shot later when they come back around <laughs> and try and capture. So for me, I would cut out this guy altogether because this is, uh, this is cut off on the wheel. Or I would crop it off more so that this guy's cut. Let me see if he's in focus. Yeah, he's in focus. All these guys are just about in focus, but this guy seems to be more in focus than this guy. So I, I if this guy was in better focus, I would crop in on him. So let me show you let me show you a crop that I would do. Let me see if that works. Yeah, I would crop off more of the bike and make make this more central. I just wish he was a little better focused. Wait, let me, I need to keep the four by three. Mm, let me go a little wider. I like how the mud is splashing there. And I know it's level. I'm wondering if a Dutch angle would make it a little more interesting. Yeah, this, this umbrella is a little distracting, isn't it? But I would I would tilt it a little bit more to exaggerate this this angle. And then let me add some sharpening. Uh let's turn the noise filter off. We don't need any noise reduction because this is at what ISO 400? Yeah, we don't need any noise reduction. And they chose a vivid. 
let me try. Let me try eye enhance. I rarely use eye enhance, but I feel like it might work with this image. Let me try it. And then we'll add some dehaze. Definitely some clarity. And histogram looks good. Uh, let's go with a normal curve. I don't, I don't like the auto gradation on this. It's not giving me enough contrast. Let me try normal, normal gradation. And then watch this hourglass up here in the corner before, uh, bef you know, so that the image, the processing finishes. My system is just a little slow with the, uh, with the raw images. Okay, let me brighten it up a tiny bit. Just about a third of a stop. Maybe drop the crop so the umbrella does not take up the whole image. Uh, then, then there wouldn't be enough headroom, I think. That's an interesting idea. What if I cropped? See, I got this going up this way. I think a little more Dutch angle, but then I'm afraid to crop any more off the top. Let me see. That feels too tight to me. Maybe right there. And I need more red in this photo. This dirt, this dirt needs to be a little bit punchier. So maybe just warm the image up a tad. Let me, let me try it this way and see what happens. Yeah, shallower depth of field would have blurred the background. It'd be tough to do. They're at f6.7 on a 12 to 200, so they're, yeah, it's not going to happen with this lens. They're pretty much wide open at that focal length. Uh, yeah, that helped. Okay, so that, that adjustment on the white balance, I think, brought the mud in a little better. I just wish he was a little more in focus, but, and just a tiny bit more Dutch. And bring his foot in this way. All right, I think that's it. That's all I would do here. Um, you know, you, you could go black and white, and that would eliminate this umbrella altogether almost. You know, it, it'll just be sort of the tones in the background. But because it's in color, this umbrella really pops out. I'm just going to give it a quick... Well, no, don't. I don't want to mess with it. Black and white's not going to look good on an image like this because there's just too many, too much, too many tones going on at once. But I think this works. So let's do a before and after. So that's that's the before and after. I think that's that's a really nice picture. I really like it. Just need a little more warmth and a and a Dutch angle. I think kind of helps make it more actiony, right? <laughs> um, 
And I like the, I, I just wish the focus was here. But other than that, it's, it's a really great action shot. I love the mud spraying up here. Okay. Um, oh, hey, Bob, how are you? Oh, uh, okay. I'll, I'll look for your picture at the end if there's time. What time is it? It's only 12, so we might have some time. I'm getting through these pretty quick, quickly. Um, and let's just do one, one look at this as a single image. I think this makes a nice shot. Yeah. All right. Let's move on. Who, who did that shot anyway? That was, uh, Dicky, oh hey, <laughs> awesome, awesome. All right, uh, let's see, Wahab. What did you do here? A nice macro, beautiful flower. I can never find a flower with this many petals that are all in like primo shape. Shot this with the Tamron 90 millimeter macro lens for eight seconds at f22. Wow. Did you really need eight seconds? This shot would be better probably if you photo bracketed, like focus bracketed, because this is out of focus here. But I like, where are the bubbles? Excuse me. Um, I would crop out this corner here and center the flower. So let me do that. So this is a six by four. So we'll keep the original aspect ratio. Yeah, I think that works better. And the um, this may work better as a black and white, unless you like pink. If you like this pink, um, let me see what monochrome looks like. And then let's crush these blacks a little more. And let me crank in some dehaze. Tiny bit of clarity for the water drops. And just crank the sharpening way up. I think I overdid it on the dehaze or clarity. Something's, something's. Okay. Let me see if I can center this a little bit more. I hate the. Yeah, there we go. I like this. I like this as a black and white. Let me let me take the highlights off just a tad. Tad more. A little bit more in the shadows. All right, that's what I would do. Let's do it before and after. Um, like I said, you could probably leave it color, but I, I, I think this works better as a black and white. I did mess up the highlights and shadows a little bit. They're a little bit clipped here in the centers. 
and along here. I don't like this. I don't like the gradation here either. Gosh, what? Let me see if I can fix that. I don't like those gradations. Uh, it's in the highlights. Let me... Let me try and do it this way, a little smoother. Maybe do it as a... Yeah, let me let me crank this this gradation down this way. All right. Ugh, I wish I had the raw image, but I think this is where I would go. So we'll do a quick before and after. So I didn't like this corner here, basically. And uh, I'd have to I'd have to play with this for for a little while to get these tones better. But we're almost there on the tones. Almost there. But yeah, I like it. I like it just like this. So if we look at it by itself, I think it's a little stronger. Something like that. And then I would I would probably try and focus stack these so that you get sharp focus from the front to the back. But yeah, really nice, really nice. It looks like you used a ring light because I can see this very strong ring light in the in the water bubbles everywhere. <laughs> Not that it matters, nobody's really gonna notice that. But you know, you know, as photographers, you notice how they do things, their techniques and things that they use. All right, uh, let's go to the next one, but nice, nice, nice image. Wow. Ooh, a misty forest. Okay, this, this is, this is perfect in the sense that you really captured the mood, I think. Um, who's this one? AJ. So you really, you see it here. So what we need to do, I think, is just enhance this mood. I'm, I'm not sure if black and white would work because that that seems like uh, black and white would be the go-to, but it is for me anyway. <laughs> but I think a soft filter would would be good here to, as a starting point. Just a soft focus filter to enhance that mood. Um, maybe turn that down just a tad right there, and then. Um, I'm going to crop out this tree right here and then go a little bit wider and just focus on this area here. So, um, let me work on the crop real quick and then we'll go back to editing some of the uh, scenes. So let me go to a 16 by 9 and crop out that tree. Let me see how that looks. I cut out too much. Let me do a normal four by three. And a little bit more in the top. Okay. Um, and then let's tilt this a little bit to the left. I 
I don't know why, but it feels it feels just a little bit off. And then let's add a little bit darker mood. I, I don't know if I should, let me try with the shadows and highlights first. All right. Um, that didn't work too well for me. Let me let me do it by exposure. <clears throat> oh, hey Rick, check your cog wheel on the uh, live stream and make sure it's 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 uh, coming to you in full HD. But let me check my let me check my live stream stats. No, I still have an excellent connection here, so it's uh, probably on your end. But check the cog wheel on the stream itself and make sure you're getting full HD. Uh, this needs a vignette or something now. I don't know if I should go with a white vignette or or a darker vignette. Maybe, maybe there and then increase the soft focus effect. Let me, let me check the vignette again. I think about right there. And let's add a little bit more blue in the image. It's just very green now. Nope. What if we add the yellow? Gosh darn it. How about some magenta? So I'd like to bring some of the wood color back. Okay. What's this no effect? Let me look at monochrome. Ah, uh, no, I like the color. So what do I need to do? I need to do something with this greens and yellows. Let me work with the individual channels. There we go. So that green was just a bit overwhelming. And then let me go to the red channel. Oops. Nope. Yeah, the red channel's not helping at all. Tiny bit there. I guess it's in the blue channel. I can't believe that. Right there. Right there. All right. Let me try some... Too much. Maybe just a minus one there. Some contrast. All right. There. Okay. 
I think that works. So let's compare before and after. <clears throat> oh, a little bit too much saturation, but I think I think the main thing here is the cropping is just getting this tree out and focusing on the on the area here and get getting rid of some of this foreground here. Um, we don't really need all of this foreground. But yeah, I like it. I like this I like this tree. It's kind of it's kind of got a whole corner to corner action going. Yeah, that looks good. But yeah, this this tree on the left was really the only only mistake I think compositionally, but it's you really captured the mood there. All right. Uh Let's do a full screen image. Not bad. I, I need to turn the, turn the saturation down a tad because it's a little bit too strong here. But other than that, I think it looks good. Um, it looks like the woods behind your house, huh? Okay, nice shot, AJ. Let's see what else we got here. Oh, okay. Nice, uh, nice overlook. This looks like one of, oh, this is somebody new here, Hugh Perry. Huh. And this here in the front, I like these trees. I think it's a beautiful scene, but I don't think this wide crop or this wide angle works. I feel like I feel like a tighter crop in here. Cause look, we got we got these freaking wind things up here, these turbines. And uh let me look at what's in the image here real quick and see what's interesting. Because there's just too much going on for me. It's a beautiful land landscape, but it's there's too many flowers here, there's too much town here, and then there's this here is a little bit simpler area here on the left. I mean, the town is interesting, but we're too far away. And this canyon is interesting with the town inside of it. I like this. And I like these windmills up here. And I like these trees. All right. So what I'm going to do, I don't like this grass. So what I'm going to do is take out everything I don't like. <laughs> uh, I'm going to take out this part of the town and just keep this part in here. I'm going to get rid of this grass and these flowers. They're just not adding anything to it. I don't feel like the color is very complementary to the green. I think just all the action is right in here. Maybe capture some of it here. So let me let me try a wide crop. And then get rid of this grass. This part of the image is the most interesting for me. Right in here. <clears throat> let me let me check something. Uh Yeah, I'd like to get let me see this side of the image. This town is a little bit interesting, but I think I think the left side's a little more interesting. Right in here. So we still captured some of the flowers, which is okay. It gives this nice triangle in the corner. Uh, I need to straighten the horizon a tiny bit. 
and go back just like that and yeah you can see everything's still crooked let me see so the horizon what wait a minute they weren't so crooked over here though so we have some lens distortion so let me fix that I need to come in this way a little bit all right that helps and then just a little bit more tilt all right good and then uh, some dehaze just some basic edits here some dehaze and saturation and uh, let me go back here Okay, now we just need it to be a little warmer. Yeah, this is from the iPhone. Yeah, oh, okay, I see that. It's not bad. You can see over here the iPhone really mushed out a lot of the uh, a lot of the details in the trees. You see how mushy that is? But it's a really good image. <coughs> Otherwise, I mean, this kind of image, you don't need a high-end camera, right? Uh, let me warm it up a tiny bit. I want to try and bring some of the yellows in this in the in the foreground. <coughs> all right. <coughs> I think that's all I do with this one. Uh, other than that, really nice. Tiny bit of clarity for the mountain. Oh, that worked pretty well. A little more. Yep. I oh, that's too much. Tiny bit less, but yeah. Let's uh, compare that. <clears throat> So this, this on the left here, I mean, it's a beautiful scenery. I think just compositionally, there's too much here in the foreground. It just overwhelms the image and it doesn't add anything because you can't focus on anything. It's too busy. But with this image, we still kept some of that uh, foreground, just enough that you can tell that, you know, there's some beautiful purple flowers there. But then we focused on the main thing here. This town over here on the right, you would need a little different angle, but I like how the town feeds through the valley, but I think you still get that sense, even even though we didn't capture this over here. Uh, and then just go wider. So let's look at this by itself. I think that's a beautiful image right there. <laughs> a little bit, this, this grass here in the corner is a little distracting. Uh, but not enough. With with this, I can still see that there's, uh, what do you call these wind turbines up in here? We have a town in, in the valley. Okay, nice shot. Nice shot, soft to be fun. Really nice, but that's the before and after. Just, and I'm only showing this because I want you to see the, the, the haze and the a slight warming that I did with the white balance to bring it out because this was a little bit too blue. I'd like to bring in a little more green. I'd probably crank up. Oh, I'd probably crank up some of that green if I had some more time. Uh, 
do, do I have yeah let me let me just do that real quick the greens and the blues here there we go well not so much on this blue There we go. Now we're good. <clears throat> so yeah, now it's a little more green. I like that. But that that's a good shot. Okay, let's uh let's move on. All right, John Rayner. These I love these kind of shots where you just have the tones that outlined the the uh, the horizon here. Um, I'm just not sure about this stone up here. It's too dark. And there's a town here. I would crop out all of this rock. If there was some some differences down here that made this more interesting, but this is the same pattern all the way down. So I would I would make this a separate image somehow, but I would definitely I would definitely do a shot of this foreground, but it would be by itself. It'd be a separate image. This image up here is where all of I think the main focus, but this this could be an image too. But what I would do, I would, you know, yeah, if somebody was standing there, it would be really cool. But uh, like this, this part of the image kind of works right in here like this. Like I would, if I wanted to capture a lot of this rock face, I would do it this way and dehaze it. But um, just too, it's just too much. So let's crop all this out. I don't think it's really needed to make this image work because you capture the best part of the scene. You just got too much of this rock face. And then, yeah, right in here. So now we have just enough to tell us the texture of everything here. It's probably got the same texture as this. So now you know what the rest of this is. Maybe still too much foreground. Right in here. I think this works. Let me look at this full screen. Yeah, this works. Right here. And we just need to work with the tones a little more. Bring this up. Let me do it this way. Let me tighten up the tones. All right. <clears throat> I feel like it's in the gradation. Let me try manual gradation. There we go. Okay, John, I think that works. Oh, you're here, John. How are you? Thanks. <laughs> uh, so let's do a quick before and after. Um, yeah, so 
it's a little bit too gray up here, so I just wanted to accentuate some of the tones in here. But I did want to keep a little bit of the rock face here so that people kind of get a feel for that all of these mountains have probably the same rock structure that makes up this stuff. And maybe straighten the horizon a tiny bit, but... Uh, and then let's go to a full image. But yeah, I think this works. And if you had the raw image, you could get rid of some of all the grain at the top. You know, it, it would be a smoother gradation on all of these tones. Uh, but yeah, this is this is a beautiful, beautiful image here. I really think this works. Just needs a little straightening on the horizon a tiny bit. Just a tiny bit. It's bugging me. I'm sorry. I got to fix that. Right, right there. All right. Now, now we have an image. <laughs> now I feel better. Anyway, that, that's a, that's a good, that's an excellent image. So go back to the raw file and work, work with the tones here in the middle. And I think, I think you've got a great image and in the sky. All right, let's, uh, let's move on to the next one. Oh, thank you, nature. Thank you, Bob. I, I get lucky sometimes. <laughs> okay. Uh, I knew this was Deb's photo. <laughs> She's been doing a lot of photos, uh, pictures lately uh, with this black background. I think uh, it's just a little bit too black here. We need to bring the shadows up. But it's a it's beautiful flower. It must be an orchid or something. Not an orchid, but what do you call these things? Uh, a tulip of some kind, maybe. Um, and it's really it's a really good crop, too, already. I like how it's cropped. Uh, Sorry, I was just reading Rick's comment. That's yeah, that's a good point. To capture the the size of the cliff, you need to be at a really different angle. That's true. But I think this crop is perfect. I would not change that. I think all I have to do is work with the tones in here a little bit and bring these back. Oh, a lily. Thank you. God, I don't know what it, where my brain was. You know, my brain has not been uh too good to, to today. So, is this a raw image? It is a raw image, no wonder, because I'm seeing all the settings here. I think we went a little bit too harsh. Uh, I see what you're doing here. You want this to stay black, though. That's why you did that. So, how do we bring these back? I might have to do it with the tone curve. So, Deb, if you're watching, maybe we can go to the red and try and bring this back in. Uh, bring them back in this way. <clears throat> and yeah, this is a great super close up, right? I think the cropping is perfect. I really like this. Uh, I, I introduced some red tones into the blacks here, but we might be able to crush these back. Uh, let me see, what would I use? Maybe a dehaze. Uh, where's, my, where's my tone curve? Maybe desaturate the reds a little bit. Oh, I can't do it. Yeah, yeah, we can upload RAWs now. So if you want, you can upload .orf RAWs, because I use Olympus Workspaces. It only recognizes Olympus RAWs. I may start using Lightroom to edit. Uh, this was a 60-millimeter uh, macro lens from Olympus at f18 for two seconds, ISO 100. I would have done this at ISO 200. 
uh, Deb. That's the only difference I would make. Uh, let me see. What what else did she do in tone curve here? Nothing on the mid tones. Let me crush the. Let's go to minus nine. No, that's too much. All right. Uh, let me look at this red channel again. Maybe I can reduce the red a little bit, but bring it up. Oh, I'm just, I can't. I can't get the reds out. So I might might have to do this with a vignette. Okay. Dang it, what? What picture mode? We're in natural picture mode, so why can't I adjust these? Uh... Oh, because it's not an EM1. What is this? EM5 Mark II. That's why. Dang it. I may have to take the reds back out a little bit. Okay, uh, this is a tough exposure. The dynamic range is, is, oh, gradation, dang it. That's all I need to do. Let's do that. All right, that helped. Now let's crush the blacks back in. Hopefully that's not too much. Cross our fingers and what if I turn this off now? <clears throat> um Oh, yeah, Rick, you know, because when you shoot ISO 100, the camera's doing some additional processing to the image uh, <clears throat> that, and I believe what it's doing is crushing the blacks even more. So if you shoot at ISO 200, you're eliminating that one extra layer of um processing done in camera so that you can have a little more control in post-processing. I mean, I, I doubt there's much difference really, but I, I would have shot at ISO 200 just to eliminate that one layer of processing done in camera. Uh, we kind of lost the black background with all this editing I did, which is I think the point of this whole image. Where's my... So what I'm gonna have to do... Let me do it on all channels. Yeah, I let me reset everything. Dang it.
I think the original image, we got this black background. Let me just work with the gradation. Auto. And then crush this a little bit more. I think they get, you know, the, the problem we have here is that the reds here got are just not bright enough. And when I brighten the reds up, I bring the background back in. So this picture has to be taken again. Um, and you have to take this picture a little bit brighter because you've really captured everything is perfect. This is a this is a tough shot, Deb. <laughs> it's an excellent picture, but I I'm I just want this to be a little brighter in the middle. But I can't seem to do it without. Let me reset this. I can't seem to bring the reds in. If if I was using Lightroom, I could do this a lot easier. But in Workspace, I can't do it. I just want to bring this area a little brighter. So I would use a spot brush or a, a layer a gradient layer or a color a color uh what do they call it i forget what it's called but you can you can you can brighten exact colors and uh get this right but it it's a great picture deb i wish i could do i wish i could do more for you on it in workspace but i cannot you have to use a little bit better software because all I can do is go into the red channel and brighten it up like this. And this, not this, this one. And bring it down this way. Because this red, this the, the illuminance of the red is too close to down here. See, we're at, we're at a 37 red here. We're at a 99 red here. It's just too close. This is a 44 versus 40. These two places are too close, so you need more light here. All right, let's move on. I'm sorry, Dev. Beautiful image, though, but I can't do it in workspace. What I want to do, I want to bring these up a little brighter. But there's, there's sort of a before and after. You can see where I'm going, right? Um, with the reds, I want this red to be right. And it might be okay to have this in red down in here. Uh, instead of having an all black background, that might work as well, especially if you're framing this. But this image on the left, the, the reds are too dark. All right, uh, like I said, let's move to the next one. Um, God, there's so many here, I gotta work fast. Okay, EM10 Mark II with a Sigma 56. It must be Paul. Yeah, you're the only one I know with that Sigma 56. Yeah, it, it was very good without the editing. But um, on the previous, the, the flower picture, it was very good. I just wish I could have done more with the reds. Uh, this one here, there's... It's, it needs some, um, I, I like the, I like the idea here of sort of this path going to somewhere. And I like the benches. I mean, I like, I kind of like the feel. Let me see what's in here. I mean, there's a lot of good things in this photo, but we need to focus on, we need to focus on something in the photo because we've, we've captured too much here. Yeah, the white balance, the white balance is a little bit off. Yeah, I'll, I'll get to that. But I'm just trying to capture, I'm just trying to capture what's interesting to me in this image. I mean, there's a lot of interesting things, but there's too many things. Uh, I think, I think I like this side the best, this row of benches being empty 
And all of this on the left doesn't add anything really. And then a lot of the top here probably doesn't need to be there either. So I'm going to focus right in, right in here. Um, depth and distance. Okay, let me see if I can keep that without. I mean, depth and distance is one thing, right? But then there has to be something interesting about it other than staring into space. You applied a preset, okay. So, man, this lens is really sharp, this 56 from Sigma. I've never seen an image from an EM10 this sharp. <laughs> It's really amazing. I'm wondering if I should start at these benches here. I hate to keep cropping in. Maybe stay with the vertical you had. Stay with the vertical idea. But start, start right there. The trees and benches. Yeah, some kind of crop with the benches. I, I agree. Let me let me look at this crop. This is okay. This is more in line with the original thought, but I think I think the original crop I had on these benches. God, this, this lens is so sharp. But I think right in here, let me look at this. I don't think we need this over here. Um, a little bit tighter. <clears throat> and I cut off this bench. Is there more? Maybe, maybe with the trash can. Like this. So we got this row of benches. Um, yeah, I would. I would not go this this warm on this image. All this tungsten lighting is already pretty warm. So yeah, I agree, Wahab. I would. Yeah, because now yeah, this is a little more interesting because now we can see what this is leading to, which is some sort of uh, storefronts or closed stores. And I'm gonna I'm gonna mess with the tone curve here. And uh, lose the orange building, huh? I'm gonna add some contrast or dehaze. Let me try dehaze. I hate to use contrast if I don't have to, but dehaze is not cutting it. I have to do a contrast. Yeah, it's a closed bar. Yeah, I figured. I kinda like this tree at the end of the trail though. Let me see what that looks like. I don't think, Rick, I don't think the angle on these benches, 
I don't think I can crop in on just the benches. Because if I get rid of that orange building, actually, let me, let me see. Let me try a vertical crop again. Three by two, five by four. I might have to go vertical. Okay, soft to be fun. We'll see you next week. Um, I mean, I, I don't think this works for me. It's just too, too tight. Even if I go the other way, five by four, and crop in this way. I'm just trying to do what Rick was suggesting about the benches uh, and getting rid of this orange building in the background, but I don't think this works. It's just the angle is just not, the angle is not appropriate for capturing the benches. So I think the original crop I had, that was more, more like this. Wait. Something like this. It's not the perfect crop, maybe a square crop. Okay, Mark Wolf, we'll see you. I might. <laughs> okay, this this works. I think this square crop works best. I think this works best. I don't mind this orange in the building in the background too much. This is this is all I would do to this image. So let's compare. So basically I just increased the contrast and cooled it off a bit and got rid of the left side and a lot of this top and focused on the benches. But I would go back to the scene and try and figure out how I can get those benches to work to work a little better. Because I, I like how this, this street lighting is coming, you know, very sharply down into the benches, but leaving the background totally black. I like that part. I even like this bleeding in coming in across the, the sidewalk or road here. I guess this is a sidewalk. Um, man, I bet this would look good as a monochrome. Yeah. This, this monochrome works. Now, let me... Let me bring the highlight. Let me make it a little bit punchier. And the red has to be reset. I think that I think it works really well as a black and white too. 
I probably crop in a little more actually and just start from this bench. Uh, start from about here instead. Yeah, I like this. This works really well, at least to my eye. I like this. I like this shot. Um, yeah, it kills that orange, right, in monochrome? Yeah. I think that works really well. Okay, let's uh, let's move on. Um, but yeah, really nice shot, Paul. I think you definitely can go back there and do some more with that. Um, what do we have here? We have, oh, we have this beautiful river and this red barn back here, our house. Great shot, except for this line. <laughs> so I would definitely do something about this wire. I would have zoomed in a little more. <laughs> um, but since we can't zoom, we have to crop. And I think I'm just going to let me just stay with four by three for now and get rid of this wire. All right, we're almost there. Let's see, do we need all of this? Because this, the lighting here is so much brighter than this side. I like the way the light's hitting the trees in here. But that might be a separate image. Uh, a lot of water here. Let me see. I'm not sure I need the left the left or right side more. If I crop out the right side and go vertical. Right in here. Just I'm just trying to get a feel for the right crop. Cuz after we take the wire out it's it's a whole different picture, isn't it? Let me see if that's if that's enough information. That's not really enough information. I have to be right. I have to I have to capture the width here totally somehow. And we can center the house. So now we have some idea of the width of this thing. All right, that's one crop. Let me look at another one. Ugh. I would, this would make a nice wide shot, but the lighting is just so different here. It's gonna be hard to balance these. So I think, let me, let me look at my other crop here. Okay, I'm going to go with this crop. I don't like the wide crop. And uh, And then let's warm it up because there's too many cool colors in here. And then bring the highlights down. Uh, 
Oh, I, cr I killed the uh, blues. Let me see if I can go back to the blue channel and bring those back. Oh, I can't do it this way. to be right there and then let's do a manual gradation on this oh I don't have manual dang it let's do auto then and go back to all the channels warm it up just what do we need we need some more greens or magenta now that looks funky we'll leave the magenta alone all right we're almost there um Maybe, let me go back up, 6,000. All right, there we go. Let me try. Let me see. I want to try two different. I want to try a couple of different filters: a soft and a vintage. Uh, soft is not working. Let me try vintage. One. Oh, I like this. I just have to fix. Whoops. And no, no pinhole. Okay, let me let me get the white balance back. Uh, go back to the auto white balance. Need some dehaze. Yeah, the sky needs to be brought in a bit, right? It'd be easy to do in uh, Lightroom, but I, I'm having trouble here. Whew. But I think this is all I can do. Editing wise, I mean, I have the raw file, but workspace is not strong enough to, to really deal with this. But I think it looks pretty good. Let's do a comparison. So there's the before and after. I mean, the art filter is kind of a personal thing. Uh, but it did a good job of bringing, bringing up the shadows and accentuating some of the blues and yellows in the water. And I wanted to, I wanted to see more of this red accent, this barn here or house, because it kind of accents the rest of the image. It's just the sky just needs a little more like somebody was saying a TLC. It's something that'd be so easy to do in Lightroom or Capture One, I should say. But okay, let's move on. Nice picture though. Uh, gosh, let me, let me work faster here. Oh, cool. Some ducks or geese, geese and baby geese. All right, this is an easy one. I like how the geese is uh, staring at you. 
because ducks or geese, they see out the sides, right? So I would get some focus right in here. So this is an easy crop. I think that and, and uh, let me stay in a four by three crop first. Something, ooh, now we need to go wider. 16 by nine. And just come in right on the, right on all the babies. and the mom and let me see how the image is wow super sharp what is this the 75 f18 no wonder and we're at f4 good job you could have shot this probably at f28 and gotten a little more uh blur up here but anyway uh let's warm it up a tad because these chickens are yellow, right? I'm sorry, these geese are yellow. So warming up the image will accentuate that. And then, uh, of course, I always like to push these. Am I on all channels? Yeah. I always like to push these for contrast, a little bit of clarity. Where's my clarity slider? Did I lose a? Did I lose one of the chicks? Oh, no. Okay, hold on. Where's my clarity button? And I'll go back and make sure I didn't. Just a little bit of clarity. All right. Uh, let me check. I didn't want to lose any. No, I got them all. I got them all. Just right there. Come down. Okay. All right. That's all I would do here. And... Yeah, I, I wouldn't do anything else. I think this this works. I mean, a partial color might be kind of interesting. Let me see if let me see if I can do a partial color on the yellow. If there's enough yellow, where's partial color? Eh. That's that's not good. I thought I thought maybe a partial color might be interesting. So instead of that, let's just reduce the saturation a tiny bit. Um Yeah, okay, let's compare that. I think that's all I would do here. Just crop just crop right in on the action here and just enough so you can see she's staring you down. <laughs> uh, all of this up here just doesn't add anything to the image. That must be a groundhog or a could be a hawk, right? Ready to come and take one of these chicks away. <laughs> but yeah, nice image. It's that time of year, isn't it? All right, let's move on. Oh, beautiful landscape. I like this. I'm not sure I need all of this, though. I mean, if there was something interesting about that, I like, I like everything. I just, I'm, this, this part of the image is taking up two thirds of the image, but it's not adding anything but mud. But this background is beautiful. So when you, you know, Amir, when you take pictures, you, you have to be careful because you always see people talk about, you know, you got to get some foreground in to make your image more striking. But sometimes if the foreground is just mud, I don't, uh, I don't think you should include it. <laughs> sometimes people put rocks, right? But sometimes they're just rocks and they're not very interesting for foreground. So everything back here is the most interesting thing. So I will... I'm just going to crop this like I always do, 16 by 7, and go all the way up. Get rid of this fence line. Let me see how that looks. This helps a tiny bit. The horizon's crooked. 
and I'm going to crop in some more. I mean, we can keep a little bit of the foreground. And we don't need all of that sky. Let me try that. Mm, I don't like that crop. Maybe this side. All right, there we go. I mean, I'm not crazy about the sky up here, but that's just, that's enough foreground. A little bit of this mud and then this bank of flowers works for me. And let me just uh, crank up some contrast. And uh, dehaze is always nice on a, on that, clarity is good on clouds. And I think that's it. Let me straighten this a little bit more. Yeah, okay. I think that's all I would do to this. And then always warm it up. That's too much right there. Okay, let's do a before and after. So yeah, this is this is overbearing and there's nothing, you know, if there was a giant alligator or a couple of hippos or something in this mud that would make make bringing the foreground in more of the subject and the story and then the background can just play its role as a background, like this mountain skyline. But since there's nothing going on here but some mud, you got to crop it out, especially this fence. But there's there's a much, much more interesting image, I think. The only thing I would do is maybe on the cropping, actually everything over here is really interesting too. Oh, come on. There we go. Let me see if that... Yeah, this, this grass here is bothering me. I think that's why I didn't crop it over here. But I like the clouds over here on the right better. Let me see how that looks. No, I like I like the original crop I had better over here on the left side. Something, something more like that. Yeah, that's my final. So a little more contrast tiny bit warmer. All right, bingo. Let's move to the next one. Thanks, Bob. Last two. Hopefully my battery lasts long enough. What is this? A hotel? H? I think that's hotel. Oh, we're trying a long exposure and it says Olympia on the front. <laughs> Ismail. Okay. Yeah, this definitely needs some, uh, what's going on here? These are weird light trails in here. Maybe this is a guy on a bicycle that went across because it doesn't look like a car. Um, I 
let me let me fix the exposure. Let me just let me just see what the exp where's my exposure? Here it is. Let me see what's in this image. I can't see anything. Okay, it's kind of blue hour. It's just a little bit underexposed, but it's blue hour. And uh, it's crooked. So let me fix that. Okay, and I don't know if I can do anything with the shadows here. I don't want to bring them up too much because it'll start bringing noise in. So actually, let me just turn the filter on. Okay. This red light is bugging me here. And I think, you know what might be an interesting filter is a cross process too. Because that'll turn a lot of the yellows to red here. Let me try that. Oops, that's not two. Here's two. Number two. Yeah, now we're talking. Now let me bring up the shadows again. I need the exposure. Oh, I'm, I'm maxed out on the exposure, so I got to do it with the curve. Where's my gradation? I can do it with gradation a little bit. Dang it, where's my blue channel? Let me try and bring the blue up. And the greens. I wish I could make this brighter. No. Nope. All right. That's about all I can do with this. I'm I'm just not able to bring up the shadows more. Okay. I think that's all I would do. Too much shadow. We'll leave the highlights where they were. Yeah, it's a little bit too dark, right? But it was, it was a bit underexposed to begin with. Okay, I think that's all I can do here. Oh, my battery went dead. Let me fix that real quick, because we're down to the last image. Yeah, I think this is all I can do with this one. Yeah, this diamond patterns, I like I like the street, but I can't bring this out enough. I was trying to do it with the uh Let me try this. 
the midtones and the highlights back in. Now the image is a bit too bright for my taste, but I think that works. It still looks a little crooked. <sighs> Dang it. Um, there. Yeah, I like I like these I like these sidewalk crossings. But yeah, there we go. Um That's what I would do. It's really really a cool picture. I would probably have to bracket this a little bit uh or expose this about two stops brighter to begin with. But yeah, I like I like this. This is a cool. This is like a picture I would take <laughs> if I was out in the same location. I would probably do this exact same angle, but I would do it a little bit brighter to bring out the sidewalk, this crossing, and this blue hour sky, so there's less grain in the image. All right, let's move on. Um, but I think that works. Oh, thanks, nature. All right, last one here. Let's see what we got. Oh, a little, it's like a Christmas picture. Um, it's a band. I bet somebody we know is probably in here. John is probably in here. <laughs> Or one of his one of his brother or sister is in here. I don't know. Let me see. Uh, I'm trying to find somebody interesting. What is this guy doing? Oh, I thought maybe he was holding a phone up to his uh his head, but he's adjusting his hat. So nobody's playing at all. Well, this, no, that guy's not doing nothing. Look at all these saxophones, man. God, I bet this was an awesome uh, band. This guy's looking at what? We don't know. Yeah, the blue flare, we'll fix that. Or, or we'll, we'll accentuate it, because there's red lights up here, and there's a blue light here. Uh, and I would, uh, I might have to go crazy on this one. Let me, let me see what the cross process two does. No, that didn't work. I didn't think it would. No, 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 none of these. So what am I going to do? I know, I know. Hold on. We're going to do... And... Oh, this doesn't have it. All right, I can't use diorama. Where, what the heck? What filter was I using that had this? Let's go vintage. My brain is, my brain is farting again. Hold on. Maybe it was, yeah, instant film. Why am I not seeing it? I'm looking for my starlight effect. I could have sworn instant film had that had had it. If instant if it's not here, I can't use it. But I wanted to get a starlight effect here. But let's go with instant film and then fix the white balance a little bit. 
Uh, well, let me see what it, yeah, this works. Let me look at the red and blue again. Yeah, since I can't get the starlight effect on these lights, I'm just going to ignore them, ignore, ignore the color. Go with an instant film to kind of give us some toning. But I can always manually tone this. So the highlights, let's see, the highlights are, let's add some, let me think, let's add some, Let's add some reds in the highlights like that. Not too much, just a little bit like that. And then in the shadows, let's add some blue. Let me lock the center. Right here. And then Am I on the blue channel or not? Why am I not seeing it? All right. Let me work on the green channel a little bit. No. I'm trying to, uh, the blues are just not showing. I might have to work with highlight and shadow to get the blues to show. Nope. I don't like this red tint anymore. A little bit less red. Okay. Right about there. Get rid of this one, this one. There we go. Now I'm back. All right. Okay, Plato, we'll see you later. All right. I think that's what I would do processing wise. Then cropping wise, it needs to be a little straighter. see right there and no All right, I think that's all I would do. Maybe turn this filter off. Let me see. 
Yeah, that's better. I did my own toning, so let me fix the reds. Go back to the blues. The blues are good. All right. I think that's all I would do. Um, just convert it to black and white because the the glare is just crazy but that's the before and after i think it kind of works as a black and white better than better than the color did cuz this blue light whew, man this thing is just sort of it probably looked good while you were there but photographically it's it's just destroying everything um But now I think, I think this, I think this is a little, a little bit easier image to look at without that big blue light glaring on everybody. <laughs> and now you can kind of see everybody's faces without being distracted with that light. All right. I think that's it, guys. Um, I appreciate everybody that submitted pictures this week. They were all really awesome shots. And it was really a pleasure to, to edit those. And, and I always learn as much as uh, anyone when I do these from, from the chat section, from your suggestions, uh, as well as just getting more practice in. So I'll be back on Thursday. And again, I'm going to try and work on doing some sort of a... Oh, sorry, Bob. You did, you did submit... All right, let me try. Since I put a fresh battery in, let me, uh, let me see if I can grab it. Um, wow, it looks like there's been several photos submitted since I, Bob, who is this? This is Capeta. Dang, there's, there's, there's three more images, but I'll, I'll look at yours real quick, Bob. Oh, okay. This um, this is nice. Let me download it. It's a beautiful pasture image. So um, here we go. Um, yeah. Oh, look, there's a little bird in here, too. Almost. Almost. Uh, what would I do here? I love these trails. When I go hiking, I'm so happy when I see all these flowers and then it just leading somewhere. I totally get, you know, why you would take a picture like this because it's just the, the feeling you get when you're there is, is amazing. Uh, on these kind of hikes so I would I'm gonna go with a soft focus and um, I'm debating if I should do a white I think maybe a black vignette No, that's too much. Just just a hair. And then let's work with the uh whoops. No, let's stay there. But let's really bring this in. Let's bring the shadows in and warm this up a bit. And uh, let me see if I can bring the highlights down just a tad. All right, there we go. Uh, and then I would just crop this to center. Because this tree needs to be there, but 
not that much of the trees, so let's try vertical crop. Uh, where is it? Yeah. Right in here. Might be too much crop. Let me see. Right there. Okay, I'm sorry, everybody. Probably a lot of people left, Bob. Are you still here, Bob? <laughs> um, but that's what I would do with that shot. So you still have the. You can see the bird a little better. It's like. It's it's a little bit more it stands out a little more, and um, just center that that cave. But yeah, I, I love I love this kind of. Uh, oops, wrong button. Yeah, I think that's what I would do with this shot. I would go with a vertical, soft focus, and then more contrast particularly in the shadows, and then warm it up. Okay, I'm going to go now. <laughs> so we'll, uh, we'll see you guys again uh, next week. Thanks, thanks for coming in and uh, submit some pictures, and I'll, I'll, I'll try and edit faster. I don't know why I get hung up sometimes, but I appreciate everybody that came in.